probably heard of some people making like tons of money on Airbnb and other people telling you that it's so expensive to operate any short-term rental property listed on Airbnb, Airbnb fees are expensive, that at the end of the day or at the end of the month, you really don't come home with that much cash flow. The issue at hand is where is the money? And the truth of the matter, there are people or properties out there that are performing at both ends of the spectrum and everywhere in between. But I know the truth. There's no going back. So in this video, I'm going to cover what makes a good Airbnb or a good location stand out versus ones that are poor performers. So if you guys are out there and you're interested in investing in a short-term rental property and listing on sites like Airbnb or VRBO, what separates a good investment from a bad investment? If you guys hang around till the end of the video, I'm gonna reveal where our four Airbnbs are located. And we also have one long-term rental, which I'll include just for comparison. How many nights were booked in the month of October, 2021? How how much revenue we actually brought in and then I'll cover the expenses in full detail down to the dollar how much it cost to operate the property what the debt service on the loan was so basically the mortgage and then ultimately what we were left with to take home in the form of cash flow so that's money in our pockets at the end of the day after all expenses are, have been paid so make sure you hang around for that number because honestly it might surprise some of you money 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 my name is Michael Elefante. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. If you find any value in it, please hit the like button below. It goes a long way in pushing this video out to other people out there on YouTube that may get value from it as well. And of course, if you have any interest in personal finance, becoming financially free through real estate and how to own and operate Airbnb properties, give me a subscribe and follow along for future content. So here are the top things to consider for an Airbnb property. First and foremost, which most of you probably already think about is location. Location is certainly key. You have to be in a place where there's tourism. It's different from a traditional long-term rental where you're just, you know, have a unit and somebody's gonna sign a six or 12 month lease and they're going to live there full time. You have to select a location where there are people from out of town coming to visit for an extended period of time, whether it's two, five days, seven days, or even uh, 30 days or more. So when I'm thinking location, I'm looking in a lot of markets that are either traditional vacation spots. So you're gonna have beaches, mountains, lakes. You can also invest in cities, although they're going to have typically more strict short-term rental laws out there, but in many cities out there, you can still operate as a short-term rental. If there's business and leisure travel, like why are people visiting there? What does the seasonality look like? Which is the next point I wanna to touch on. So seasonality, I'm just talking about the typical occupancy rate that you can expect throughout the year. Cause some months, especially for example, a Northern lake or beach are going to be slammed, packed, busy during the late spring to the early fall, right? All the summer months are gonna be slammed, but then the winter months, there may be a lull if there's nothing else to do in that area. So you have to consider seasonality. For both of these factors, right? Location or different markets to look at and seasonality, I use AirDNA. I'll drop a link to AirDNA among other things in the description below for you guys to check out. AirDNA is essentially a data hub for all things short-term rental. They actually pull the data analytics from Airbnb and VRBO and they compile that in an easy to consume format. You can look at every single market in the country and you could use filters and actually dive in to each of those markets to see you know, how would a three bedroom with two baths that can sleep eight to 10 people, how would that do throughout you know, the past three years? It'll show you the occupancy levels and it will also show you the average daily rates, projected revenues. You can look at top performing properties. What do those properties have that maybe some others don't? Why are they bringing in this much money? So it's a great tool to use. It's a great baseline too during your investment analysis. One key thing I personally look at, which I think has allowed us to be pretty successful with Airbnb, is looking at properties and thinking, you know, does it have one to three key moments within that house? We'll call it a wow factor for lack of better terms in order to stand out. How can we get a higher click rate on Airbnb? At the end of the day, it's no different than social media. Think Instagram or TikTok. It's all about attention span. How can you draw a click from somebody, whether they're on a mobile device or on a browser, how can you draw them to click on it and want to learn more? That gets you to the Airbnb splash page, which you have your five photos. Maybe it has the key moments within your house. You need professional photography. And this leads us into the next thing, which is how to furnish it. You have to furnish it well. You don't have to buy designer furniture, but don't furnish it just like a typical house that most people have, right? Make things pop and stand out in photos because you have to create some type of want and desire for people to stay there. Why should they stay there versus the thousands of other properties, especially in larger markets. Next, we have to do an investment analysis, which you guys, this is one of the biggest mistakes people make is they blindly invest in a property thinking this is a good market, this is a cool house, 
you know, it'll probably rent out, I'll make some money, and you're probably right. If it's a good house in a good market and you furnish it well, you'll probably make pretty good money. But how hard is your money working for you? This is where we do an, an analysis to actually look at the forecasted cash on cash return and the forecasted total return on our investment. If you guys want to learn how I evaluate properties, it will also be in that link in the description below. You can download my investment analysis tool. So those are a few things to keep in mind when you guys are looking at different markets and different properties that could be an Airbnb. Now I'd love to walk you through the numbers from the month of October and I'm going to disclose everything down to the dollar on how much revenue we brought in, how many nights each of these properties were booked last month, what our operating expenses were, the principal and interest portion of our mortgage, that's the debt service, right? Was we didn't buy these houses cash, we took on a loan from the bank and ultimately what our cash flow was. For this first property, this was actually the first one we ever bought and put on Airbnb. It's located in East Nashville, Tennessee. It is a four bedroom, single family house and it can sleep up to 12 guests. So when we bought this place, it was in somewhat of a cookie cutter development with 11 or so houses and they all had the same floor plan. And we needed to find a way to stand out because we weren't downtown, right? You still had to take a 10 minute Uber in. So why should people want to stay at our property? So one thing we did was added a custom mural. We hired an artist that was local in Nashville and they put in a life-size mural of butterfly wings with Nashville written above it. And our target you know, clientele was bachelorette parties or other people celebrating a special occasion. Something in Nashville that makes the city un not necessarily unique, but somewhat of a special place um, not for everybody, but for some people, they love taking photos in front of these murals. There's murals all over the city. There was a few murals that got a ton of attention when celebrities came in and posted on their Instagram several years ago. So now you can literally drive downtown or in the Gulch of Nashville and there's several murals with big wings and there's you know, a line of 100 people on a Saturday morning waiting to take that one photo. So we wanted to bring that experience inside. This place also has a cool rooftop. It was a new build. We spent some money to furnish it well. And we think we do a pretty good job of differentiating and standing out, which enables us to charge a higher average daily rate in that area than our competing properties. Long story short, that's what we did with that place. And in the month of October, it was booked for 22 nights and brought in $13,824 in revenue. Now, just to put this in perspective, this property listed as a long-term rental, right? One that you would rent for 12 months on a lease agreement would probably rent for three to $4,000, but no more than that. So you can literally three to five X the revenue potential and five to 10 X the cash flow potential with short-term rentals, if not more. The operating expenses are more than a long-term rental. So this is things like cleaning fees, uh, taxes, property taxes that is, utility bills, insurance, and incidental, so if we provide you know, K-cups for the Keurig and towels and things like that, this totaled $4,276, and the principal and interest portion of the mortgage was $1,914, leaving us a cash flow of $7,634 for just one month for this property. The next property is a two bedroom condo, more of a townhouse located in downtown Nashville. It's a historic townhome. It was built like 45 years ago, I believe. Um, and we bought it turnkey in 2020 and it sleeps up to eight people. And this place stays relatively booked because we have a really good uh, pricing strategy. Um, pretty affordable to book actually. So we were booked 29 nights in October and it brought in $12,129. Operating expenses totaled $2,951, and our debt service, the principal and interest portion of that was $1,667. So again, we just do that simple math, take our revenue minus the expenses and the principal and interest, and our cash flow was $7,511. That's insane because this place would definitely not rent for more than maybe $2,500, maybe $3,000 a month. Um, it does so well on Airbnb because it's in a good location and we have a really good pricing strategy. These next two properties are our cash cows. They are located in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And the, Gatlinburg, Tennessee is basically the Tennessee side of the uh, Smoky Mountain National Park. Why did we choose this location? Remember going back to talking about the importance of location and what are things to do in that area. The Smoky Mountain National Park is the most visited national park in the entire country, which a lot of people do not know that. And this is actually the most visited by far for the country. So we found a couple places in the past year 
and we renovated them. Some, uh, one was more cosmetic, right? New paint, new floors, new light fixtures. The other one we did a little bit more involved, which we'll get to later. But this one that I'm gonna cover next is a four bedroom cabin. Um, it has, doesn't really have a view of the mountains and it still rents really well. Uh, it was booked for 24 nights. Um, oh, it sleeps up to 16 people, by the way, but most of our groups are right around that 10 to 12 range. So it was booked for 24 nights last month. The revenue was $15,253, and our operating expenses was $4,410, and the principal and interest on the loan was $2,054, leaving us a cash flow of $8,789. Now, this place has done cash flow north of $20,000 one month. That was back in July. If you guys wanna go watch that video, you can. Insane month. But right around eight dollars to $9,000 is about average for this property, so we're happy with this. The next property is one that we uh, went in on 50-50 with another investor. There's some friends that we met in Nashville. And um, he is a home builder and house flipper in Nashville. So we came to a conclusion that if we could find a property that needed a good bit of work, it would blend our talents and skills, right? Us on the Airbnb side, setting it up, furnishing it, managing it, and then he could manage the rehab. So we converted a two car garage into a home feeder room. This place has an awesome rooftop patio, great views, hot tub, a ton of amenities. It sleeps up to 12 guests, and this place stays booked. It is a cash cow. Uh, it was booked for 27 nights, brought in $25,040. The operating expenses were only $4,335 and the debt service, or the principal and interest at least, was $2,025, leaving us a cash flow of $18,680. But since we split the cash flow 50-50, our take home on this, or our cash flow for this property was $9,340. So those are the four Airbnb properties, pretty insane. We average just over $30,000 a month. We have done over $50,000 in cash flow a month, sometimes a little bit less. You know, it kind of ebbs and flows depending on the season. Now I'm going to review the one long-term rental that we have, just to show you guys the uh, difference between short-term rentals and long-term rentals and why I'm so biased on short-term rentals. This is actually the house that we used to live in in Nashville, but it's not zoned for a short-term rental, so we cannot, cannot Airbnb it per se. So we decided to rent it out in the meantime, maybe sell it down the road, but it rents for around $3,100 per month. After paying our property manager, our take our revenue on that is $2,981. It's a three bedroom, three bath, and it has a pretty decent sized backyard for East Nashville. Again, compare that to the 12,000 to 25,000 that our other properties are bringing in, just shy of $3,000 is like almost laughable. Our operating expenses, which is only our uh, insurance and our property taxes is $403 and the principal and interest portion on the loan is $1,821. So our cash flow, which is not bad for a traditional long-term rental, but it's it's not even close. I mean, not even 10% of any of like the other properties that we have, $758 for the month. Let's add all this up. Between those five properties, the four Airbnbs and the one long-term rental, our revenue for one month was $69,227, and then our cash flow, even after our investors 50-50 cut on that one property, totaled $34,032. Um, just to put this in perspective, we started actually literally two years ago from this month is when we uh, got our first property. So this can like happen really fast and grow and compound. You can save up the cash flow from your properties, reinvest it into future properties. I wanted to cover one other thing, and this is really the holistic benefit of owning real estate. And I'm just gonna go over, not even go over, I'll just tell you guys the total gain from principal pay down, right? When you're paying a mortgage, a portion goes towards interest, which goes to the bank for basically saying thank you for uh, lending the money to you, right, to buy that house a portion goes towards principal. So over the course of let's say a 30 year mortgage, your principal balance actually goes up every single month until the house is paid off and then you get to keep all of the principal that you had paid down on that house. So our gain from principal pay down on the loan, which our guests are technically paying for us, this is on top of cash flow, uh, from these five properties totaled $3,025. And that does not account for appreciation. I'm not even gonna account for appreciation. I've done it in past videos, but it has been bonkers the past 12 months. So I usually do a baseline of 3% appreciation growth, but it's been over 20% in the past year. So I just took that out for now. So the total net gain in wealth, not even accounting for appreciation, you just add cash flow and um, principal pay down, 37,000 and change, just from owning and operating short-term rental properties. And it doesn't take us more than one to three hours per week on average. 
to manage these properties ourselves. So I always encourage people when you're first starting out, try and self-manage before you pay a property management company until you scale beyond a point where you, you feel like your time is better spent elsewhere. Now, if you guys are super fired up about investing in short-term rentals and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough money for a down payment, that's okay. What's super cool about Airbnb is there's other strategies to start with little or even no money. Not even talking about partnerships where you partner with somebody who has money. You can do something known as rental arbitrage where you sign a corporate lease agreement, basically getting permission from the landlord or the homeowner that you can come in and just pay money for furniture and then re-renting it out on a short-term basis on Airbnb. Anything you collect over your operating expenses and your rent is pure cash flow. So you don't get any equity in the property, it's just a pure cash flow play. Amazing strategy though. And then next, if you literally have no money, you could do something called co-hosting. This is really difficult to get started on your first one because it involves a ton of networking. Basically, you manage somebody else's Airbnb property for them and you get a percentage of the revenue that that property generates. You are essentially the property manager. If you guys want to learn like step-by-step step how to do all of this from evaluating different markets to evaluating different properties, how to work with different real estate agents, different loan officers, how to negotiate with sellers, close on a property, how to furnish them appropriately, and how to set up the operations and set up the, um, the automation of the operations. Because at the end of the day, you don't want a second job. All of that. I do have a course if, for those that are interested. It will be in the link in the description below. You can view testimonial videos from other people who have taken it and already stood up properties. Hear from them on how well or how poorly they're doing. <laughs> Give you a hint, they're all doing really well, which is why they did testimonials for me. But um, really cool to see others become ju you know, just as, if not more successful than I am uh, in the Airbnb realm. So super cool. You can view the entire curriculum of the course there too. Again, I love being as transparent as possible to you guys. But again, if you got any value from this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and hope to see you guys again sometime soon.